Hello, friends. Welcome to the ATC Double Cut. My name is Micah Woods. In today's episode, I'm going to talk about an old blog post. This is one that is from all the way back in 2017. It's kind of a, a classic one from back then. It, it was for, it's from June of 2017. It has a title that is a quotation, the, and the, it's a quotation from Jason Haynes. He'd written on his blog that measuring clipping yield or measuring the clipping volume from every single putting green was already proving to be more valuable than I originally expected. That's the quote. And I will put a direct link to this blog post in the show notes. And in the this particular blog post, you can link to Jason Haynes' original blog post where he said or he wrote that this was proving to be more valuable than he originally expected. And there's also a link to my book, The Short Grammar of Greenkeeping. There's a link to something that Chris Tridabaugh wrote about this. There is a link to uh, some discussion of the word fertility in relation to turf grass fertilizer application. And then it goes into something that I think is really important. It's, it's the word programs. And I'm, I'm going to talk about that today because it's been on my mind this week. And because it was on my mind this week, the idea of programs or doing things to turf grass or to soil on a calendar schedule or on a regular type of schedule, I thought, I know I've written about this a lot and there must be some blog posts about it. And so I checked, what have I done recently about this? And all the recent uh, blog posts where I've written about this, I know that I've already talked about it here on the ATC Double Cut. So I thought, hmm, maybe I'll go back to my old blog post, the one that has the title of um, maybe, maybe being reactive is better than being proactive in terms of reacting to the turf grass conditions or, or reacting to how the grass is growing, reacting to the weather conditions instead of being proactive about it. But I believe that I've already recorded an episode about that particular blog post. And then I thought, yeah, there's this one where I talked about flexible fertilizer system rather than a fertilizer program. So that is my introduction to this. And now what do I want to say? Well, in the blog post, let's let's go through and, and kind of follow my line of thinking as I went from Jason Haynes' blog post where he was talking about clipping volume to my long discussion, multi-paragraph discussion in this blog post about not liking programs when it comes to turf grass management. Now, this is from back in 2017. I haven't actually read this blog post for a while, so it's kind of new to me too. Uh, and yet, I, I think the ideas that I have now are going to be pretty much identical to what I had back then on this particular topic. I've changed my mind about a lot of things since 2017, and I've learned a lot of new things since 2017. However, I think on the idea of programs versus a flexible system, I'm pretty similar. So I started off this blog post by saying, when I read Jason Haynes' interesting post about clipping yield, soil mineralization, and disease rates, and came to the part where he said measuring all the greens was more valuable than he expected, I was glad to read that. I wanted to say, I told you so, because this is a number that I think is really useful. And I'm talking about the amount of growth that you're getting from every single green on a property. And I hadn't really thought about disease connections um, and, and being able to notice some relationship between disease and clipping volume, but Jason did. And I, I wrote in the blog post, I said, I do know that golf course superintendents will find ways that I haven't thought of to make use of growth data. Because managing the growth rate of the grass is what it all boils down to. 
I've written about this in my book, The Short Grammar of Greenkeeping. And it certainly makes sense to me that when the clippings are collected anyway, why not take note of how many clippings there are? So I know a lot of people now, certainly more than we're doing this in 2017, a lot of people now are paying attention to the clipping volume. Everybody's always paid attention to how much the grass is growing, but to actually put a number to it as uh, a volume, that is something that can be really, really useful, surprisingly useful. And as the title of this blog post said, uh, more valuable than originally expected. So um, I, I'm scrolling down in the blog post and I, and I said, okay, this is where I decide to jump in here with two quick comments. And I, I said uh, yesterday, now this is back in 2017. Yesterday, I had the great pleasure of writing about fertility and that, that's a different topic. Uh, and then I said, now I want to mention programs. So real quick about fertility. Uh, fertility does not mean fertilizer. Fertility means more like being able to reproduce. So if you use the word fertility uh, as a substitute for fertilizer, that is jargon that only people in the turf grass industry are going to be familiar with. And you sound like a bit of... Uh, Mm. If you talk to the general public, fertility to them means like, can you reproduce or can you not reproduce? So it's, it's, uh, it doesn't mean fertilizer to them. So I recommend using the words fertilizer or, or um, nutrition or turf grass nutrition uh, and just trying to avoid the word fertility altogether. It's, it's grossly overused in the turf grass industry. So anyway, I mentioned that. Maybe sometime I'll do a, a uh, ATC double cut about that particular topic. But I said in, the, in this, I said, now I want to mention programs, specifically fertility programs. Now, I already said that fertility is the wrong word to use, but I think also programs is the wrong word to use. I don't think program is the right word to use when considering the nutrient supply to turf. That's what I wrote in the blog post. Program means a plan of activities or a sequence of operations that can be set to happen automatically. But with turf grass, one can assess about the nutrients that we haven't applied by measuring how much the grass is growing. So the grass grows at different rates uh, through the year and it, it grows at different rates depending on what the weather is like, what's happening in the soil, what type of growth regulators have been applied or not applied, how much fertilizer has been applied or not applied, how much water is available to the plant and or how much water is withheld from the plant. So the grass is likely producing some growth in response to fertilizer applied in the past. And one expects that there is some growth related to mineralized nitrogen too. So the, the idea of just applying nutrients on a program, applying fertilizer on a program. And, and by that, I mean like every week applying a fixed amount or every two weeks applying a fixed amount that doesn't make sense to me anymore. It, it made sense to me 20 years ago. And that's how I used to try to manage turf. It's just constantly keeping it growing, um, at a, at a relatively moderate rate. What I thought was a relatively moderate rate by applying what I thought was consistent low rates of nitrogen. And that just doesn't make sense to me anymore because that's never checking how much the grass is growing. That's just saying it's time to implement our program again. And, and I suppose that I learned that from people that I'd worked for, but I also learned it from researchers because research gets done in this way. And that's kind of why this is on my mind, because I was reading some research summaries last week and I saw some uh, some organic matter in the soil research and it was done showing, OK, if you fertilize the grass, well, it's, it, the, the grass was producing thatch 
And it's surprising to me that grass produces thatch because if you don't fertilize it too much, it won't produce thatch. That's what I think. And, and so in this particular research project, the grass was producing thatch. And so it was saying, okay, this is not getting enough sand top dressing. This turf is not getting enough core aeration. That's what the conclusion was because it was producing thatch. And so the grass quality was quite poor. But then I checked how much fertilizer was being applied and there was a, the same amount of fertilizer was being applied spring, summer, and autumn. And then in the, and it was on a calendar schedule, it was a fixed amount of nitrogen every two weeks. And I thought, you know, that's the way that I thought that used to be the perfect way to do an experiment. But actually that could be over fertilizing the grass a little bit most of the time and maybe sometimes it's under fertilizing the grass but if you do everything without checking how the grass is responding i think uh, that's not the way i want to do research projects today uh, i just think it makes more sense to adjust uh, adjust the amount of fertilizer that's applied because otherwise you can get the wrong type of conclusions. Now, this is, this is, well, I don't know. It, it's, 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 it's so different from the way research is done. But what I want to say is, I think that we can misinterpret our research sometimes if we manage the grass in a calendar program if we set up the experiment to do things on a calendar program related to fertilizer because we can end up over fertilizing the grass and if we over fertilize the grass it's producing thatch that we wouldn't really produce if we were managing the grass in a in in the way that that we could with a flexible fertilizer system but then because it's so common for for people in the turf grass industry to think of doing things on a program. And because the research is done on a program, then when we go to seminars in the winter time and we learn about the latest research, it's always like, okay, the best treatment was this product applied on a calendar schedule, like every 10 days or every two weeks or something at this rate again and again and again. So we learn about it. And then we think that the cutting edge research is also doing things on a program. But I think it actually works better to make adjustments, to make adjustments to the fertilizer rate, to make adjustments to the timing of reapplication. And you see that one of the great innovations over the last 15 years has been the growing degree day models pioneered by Dr. Bill Kreuzer with the Greenkeeper app and also the golf course superintendent at... Uh, is at the Jim Agar golf course in Lincoln, Nebraska. So here's somebody who's very practical, who also is a scientist, and he did research that showed that you can get a consistent growth suppression by reapplying plant the uh, Primo Max growth regulator, Trinexapoc ethyl. The, the initial research was on that particular product, and he found that you can get consistent growth regulation not by reapplying that product on a calendar schedule, but by reapplying that product on a schedule that's based on temperature. And so that then becomes a flexible growth regulator reapplication schedule. And I think in 2023, I think we can do the same thing with fertilizer and there are various models that one can use to reapply fertilizer. The one that I like right now, and I've talked about it a few times this year, and I have blog posts about it, that is the growth ratio, which is measuring how much the grass is actually growing and then comparing that to what the recent temperatures have been. And if you, you, you can then express the actual amount of growth compared to the expected amount of growth that you would have seen given the temperature conditions that you've had at your site. So that 
tells you if the grass is growing at about the rate that you expect, or if the grass is growing faster than you expect, or if the grass is growing slower than you expect or want. And then if it's growing at the same rate, then you can just keep your fertilizer the same. I mean, if it's growing as expected, just keep your nitrogen rate the same. But if it's growing slower than you want, and the growth ratio will tell you that, then you can increase the nitrogen fertilizer application rate. And if it's growing faster than you want, you can reduce the nitrogen application rate. So th this is a system, and I think that could be implemented in research projects, but in research projects, there's innovation in some areas, not so much innovation in other areas. And one area where there hasn't been so much innovation, I think is with the fertilizer rates that happen on a calendar schedule. Also the top dressing applications that happen on a calendar schedule. And uh, the scientists listening to this might say, Micah, but it has to be that way for the research. You know, we, we can only study one or, or a couple of things in isolation. And so we need to keep all of the other var variables or potential variables in the experiment. We need to keep those constant. And I recognize that that is a tricky problem, but I think if we apply a regimented flexible system, so, okay. Uh, it, it, to me, it's, it, maybe that's a program also. Maybe you're saying, Micah, you're not distinguishing between a program and, and a, and a system. I, I guess what I don't like is reapplication on a calendar interval at fixed rates. And what I like to do is adjust the rates and, and, or adjust the timing or adjust timing and rates in response to how the grass is growing. So that's something that I've been thinking about for a long time. I'm, uh, I'm thinking about it now. And I was looking up this old blog post that I think has a lot of interesting information in it. So you might want to check it out. So let me see what else I wrote here. That, that was me talking about what I'm thinking now. Let's see. Let's say I, I'll read from the blog post. Let's say one wants to have a flexible fertilizer system. FFS has a nice ring to it. Measuring the growth allows one to adjust the nutrient supply based on the grass response. Whatever one wants to call it, I think turf response will almost certainly be better and fewer inputs will be required if the nitrogen rate changes at almost every nutrient application. This is what the temperature-based growth potential model, uh, sorry, the temperature-based growth potential method is based on to set an upper limit of nitrogen supply at any time given the weather and then that predicted amount to supply is adjusted based on the actual grass response. So I explained in that paragraph in general what I recommend now to do specifically using the growth ratio. And it's, uh, it's something that I think has a lot of potential to have a nice, flexible fertilizer system. And what is my second point? My second point in the blog post is about, it's more about the utility of clipping volume or about mineralized nitrogen. One can expect a soil with a 10 centimeter root zone depth or four inch root zone depth and 1% organic matter to release about two grams of nitrogen per square meter in one year. That is 0 0.4 pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet. A soil with 2% organic matter may release about four grams of nitrogen per square meter. That's about 0 0.8 pounds of nitrogen per thousand. For creeping bent grass maintained at relatively low nitrogen, I expect that will produce from 50 to 100 grams of dried clippings per square meter. And based on the relationship between clipping volume and dry weight for bent grass, I expect that will work out to a fresh clipping harvest of from 800 up to 1,600 milliliters per square meter. That is, one can predict how much extra the grass may how much extra grass may grow after one knows the organic matter in the soil. I expect this makes sense to anyone who has put a number to the clippings mown off the putting greens and is gibberish to everyone else. 
but the approach of working with quantities of nutrients in the soil, quantities of nutrients harvested, and quantities of nutrients supplied as fertilizer allows one to get really precise and really efficient and supplying just what the grass requires. So that is that is something that I think is uh, is really useful to just pay attention to these numbers a little bit. I, I've been having so many discussions with with people. I know some of you are listening to this uh, and and we've had discussions about and related to this type of topic. Um, some of you may have just heard me talking about it or read some of my blog posts and kind of know that I really like to pay attention to what's changing in the soil, what the how the grass is responding, how the playing surface is responding, and paying attention to what our inputs are. And to pay attention to those as numbers, not not so much on a calendar schedule, but as uh you know, paying attention to those as, sorry, I'm just uh, checking my my screen here and how I'm recording this. Um, you know, paying attention to these numbers as as things that can be adjusted, and and I, I guess it's a bit of a change from from the way most people manage. But once you do some of this stuff, it can be incredibly useful. Uh, so I will just leave it at that. I just wanted to make a short episode to check. Uh, I've got some upcoming calls, uh, some upcoming episodes with some guests. And I wanted to check this particular software for recording and see if my computer could record this with a decent audio quality. So this is a bit of a check. And I also wanted to talk about that subject that's been on my mind about doing experiments, maybe with a flexible fertilizer system instead of a fixed uh, a fixed nitrogen rate, because we we definitely can have a problem uh, if we're fertilizing the grass, growing the grass more than we otherwise would. And then, then we think, okay, this grass needs verticut. This grass needs core aerification. This grass needs a lot of sand top dressing. When it may be that you can actually manage without doing that if you would just cut the fertilizer rate and not like force feed the grass with fertilizer. And that's where I think some of the research can be a little bit misleading. And uh, it just, just has been stuck in my head and I can't get it out of my head. So now I, I get to talk about it <laughs> and and I love having this opportunity to do so. You know, there's actually on, on that particular topic, uh, there is another ATC double cut about that and, and a blog post about it. Um, and that one, let's see, I, I think I can look at that where I, I'm going to go to the secret part of my website. Uh, I think some of you know this. If you go to the home page and just do backslash archive, it'll bring up all the posts. So there's hundreds of them. And I know there's one earlier this year, so I can just quickly scroll down and find it. That one, it's about, you need to verify like four times a year if uh if you apply enough if you apply a lot of fertilizer when did i do that when did i do that um, sorry folks i is it reflections on growth rate, nitrogen, and top dressing? No, it's not that one. Uh, here we go. Yes, so this is a recent post. It's from June of this year. It's coring three times a year is recommended when dot, dot, dot. And uh, it is... It is 
some research that was done in South Carolina, and they can the authors concluded that you get better creeping bent grass when you let's see what were they recommending. They said this study would support a recommended aerification program for bent grass greens in the transition zone to include two spring hollow tine aerification applications with half inch tines and monthly solid tine aerification during the summer and an additional fall hollow tine application with uh, half inch tines. So those are uh, 12 millimeter diameter tines that are being recommended three times a year and monthly solid tine aerification recommended during the summer. And it's like, okay, so that's what the research is recommending. But I know there's all kinds of courses with bent grass greens in a transition zone climate that are not doing that. And they are okay. And they're still okay this year, next year, two years later, three years later, four years later. It is not like things are just getting out of control when they don't do that. But then I checked how this research was done. The, and the research was done with an annual nitrogen rate on that green of 34.2 grams of nitrogen per square meter or 6.8 pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet or 342 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare. So, and this was on a a green that was 14 years old. So it already would have probably from one to 1.5% soil organic matter in the root zone which also is going to be producing, as I mentioned earlier, a significant amount of nitrogen mineralization and uh, corresponding growth. So I think that nitrogen rate is quite high for that type of climate. And in fact, uh, in that blog post, which I have already talked about on the ATC double cut, that was, let's see. This was... Yeah, so it's basically it's basically grow, getting like 162% as much fertilizer as I expected. Um, maybe maybe even more, maybe like 200% more. So I think you can have bent grass with uh, less in that climate. I think you can have good bent grass with less than 34.2 grams of nitrogen less than 6.8 pounds of nitrogen. And of course, if you're able to, uh, if, if you're able to have uh, the grass getting supplied with less nitrogen, it doesn't produce so much thatch. It doesn't produce so much organic matter. So it doesn't require so much hollow tine aerification and it won't require so much sand top dressing. So that for me is like an example of what I think can be some misleading research. It's like, is the experiment valid? Was the experiment well constructed? Are the results um, explained well in the context of the experiment? Yes, but should you actually do that? Should Should you take that research and say, okay, let's hollow time three times a year and solid time monthly? I don't know, because if you just change to a flexible fertilizer system and look at how much the grass is actually growing, maybe you can eliminate almost all of that hollow tining. Maybe. So those are the kind of things that I like to think about and I like to share with you. So uh, thank you for your interest in these topics. I will be back soon with some more interesting ATC Double Cut episodes. For now, I will sign off for ATC from Bangkok. I am Michael Woods. Bye-bye.